Uh, I need to get this mess cleaned up. Not today, though. Ready for a new bale here pretty quick. Huh? Sword around here. Mm -hmm. Looks like we got plenty of hay left. That's good. Try to get down here every morning and check on everybody, make sure everybody is where they're supposed to be and doing fine. And I'd say everything looks pretty good here this morning. Billy, what did you find? Belly. What is that? What is that? Huh? A stick? She been hanging around Callie too much. Good girl. Get it. I'm not really sure what all I'm doing today, but I know I've got to do some work over at the Walnut Orchard, so we'll start over there and see where the day takes us. That's what's going on today on Farmer Tyler Ranch. I'm over here at the Walnut Orchard now, and if you're new to the channel or if you just haven't seen me film over here, because I don't film over here very often, this is my parents' walnut orchard. There's about 20 acres here of Chandler walnuts, and I usually help my dad out over here about once a week. They harvested the nuts out of these trees probably about a month ago now, so there's not a whole lot to do, but there still are some things that we need to do to kind of get ready for winter as these trees begin to go dormant. The first thing is I've got to take the filter out of this pump. So the way these irrigation pumps work on orchards, at least in my area, is you have a submersible pump. So the actual pump is not above ground here. It is down below. I'm not sure how deep this one is, but it, it goes down there quite a ways. Those submersible pumps pump the water up through this pipe, will then go out into the sprinklers. One of the worst things or a bad thing that you can have in sprinklers would be like sediment or sand going through the line and plugging up those orifices. So that's why we've got these big filters that the water goes through before it goes out into the network of sprinklers. In the winter time when we're done irrigating, what we'll do is pull this filter out and go clean it and store it in the shop until we start irrigating again in early summer, maybe late spring, depending on what the weather does. And it had some water in it. I guess I should have emptied that first. Oh, all right, here's the filter. It actually looks pretty clean, but we'll go ahead and wash it anyway. One of the dog's favorite things to chew on are walnuts, but unfortunately for them, can't find too many of those on the ground this time of year. Next thing I gotta do is service up this brush shredder here and I can see there must be some puncture vine growing in the yard over here because the dogs keep getting stickers in their paws. Is that it? Is that it? What this machine does is it hooks onto the back of the tractor very similar to a flail mower but it's not intended to cut grass. It's intended to shred up brush after you go through and prune trees. We didn't prune the trees this year and we're not planning to, but my uncle did and he needs to use this thing. So I'm gonna get it serviced up and ready to go. So when he's ready for it, it's ready for him. With you joints, no need to get carried away. One or two shots is all you need, which is hard to do with an electric grease gun. That's probably plenty. So you can see the way this thing works, it's basically like a flail mower on steroids. The blades are uh, probably five times as thick as that on a flail mower, maybe thicker. And then you've got these bars in the back. These are adjustable. What they do is they hold that brush in the brush shredder so that it can shred it a few times and just break it up. It's not gonna be like what it would look like coming out of a wood chipper, but pretty close to that. All right, I think we're more or less good on this thing. 
I'm sure on camera it's going to appear that I was only here for a total of 20 seconds, but it's actually a lot longer than that. But you know, this is the way it goes. One of the next jobs I'll need to do out here is mow, but I'm not going to do that today because for one, the ground is a little bit wet and I don't want to take the tractor out here and make ruts and compact the ground and all that. But also because a big reason that we need to mow is to chop up all of these leaves that are on the ground. And as you can see, there's still a ton of leaves up in the trees. So trying to mow the leaves up and chop them up right now wouldn't really be that great of a use of time because we're just gonna have to come back and do it again later. But you can see how yellow the leaves are turning. If we get some wind in the next week, I'm sure most of these will come down. So now, I guess we gotta go find something else to do. Good oh girl. Come on, Billy. Good oh girl. We're back at the ranch. Since it's a bright sunny day, I thought it would be a good opportunity to charge up the EcoFlow. But the one thing I don't like about doing that with the solar panel is that wherever you set up, you're kind of stuck there. So I had an idea of how I can solve this problem. I'm thinking the solar panel is just about the right size to make a good roof for the side-by-side. -side. So we're gonna see if this is gonna work. So far looking good, but that ain't gonna stay up there. So I'm gonna tie it on with some hay twine. This is probably not a permanent setup, but just for, you know, putting around the ranch here, I think it's gonna work fine. Now there's an idea for a new product, side-by-side -side roofs that are also solar panels to charge power stations. You heard it here first. I've kind of made a game out of trying to never charge the EcoFlow off of AC power, although you can easily do that. I figure I've got the solar panel, why not take advantage of that, especially on a nice sunny day like today. I've been really happy with this Delta II Max. If you guys are paying attention, you probably notice that it is almost always in the back of the side-by-side. -side. <laughs> this has become something that I didn't think I would use as much as I've ended up using it. If you're interested in getting a Delta II for yourself or one of the other solar generators that EcoFlow offers, now would be a good time to do that because they are having a Black Friday sales event that I will leave some information about in the description below. What are you guys doing? <laughs> Barn cats are pretty relaxed around me even and they don't really take off until Callie shows up. I wonder why that could be. But enough about all that. I know I've got a little piece of fence that I need to fix over here kind of by the corner of the corral. And as luck would have it right now, all the cows are gathered around down there, kind of waiting for me to put their bale out. So rather than try to fight with them and push them all out of the way, I think we'll go ahead and drop the bale for them a little bit early today, just to sort of get them out of my hair. And then I can start working on that fence. good here. The oil line is at safe. I feel good about that. I remember when I was a kid, my grandpa sort of chuckling and saying that you never have to change the oil on this tractor because it burns so much that as long as you keep it full, you're kind of just always changing the oil. I used to think that was a joke, but now that I've been running this thing for a couple years, I don't think it was a joke. I think it was being serious. Hey girl, you know what the flag means. You stay. Good girl, Belly. Good stay. Good stay. 
That's what I'm talking about. Where are you at? Come here. Good girl. You did good. You did good. She's learning. Uh-oh. You caught it. Good job. Guys getting tired of seeing it yet? Remember, I do this every single day and I'm still not tired of it. I just, that tickles me to death. Every day when I do this and I walk back over to the gate, the cow that is front and center waiting for me, you guessed it. Buddy. <laughs> and to look at Buddy, you can tell that he's he's not exactly going hungry now, is he? But he's he's always the most eager one, so. Let's turn them loose. What a good girl. What a good girl, Belly. Good stay. Good stay, yes. Very good. Belly is sure picking things up fast and I know a couple videos I or a couple videos ago I talked about how just spending time with a dog and walking with them and letting them sort of learn the rhythm of your life is very helpful and staying out of the corral while I'm in there is kind of one of those things. I didn't really sit down and set out to train her to do that, but just the repetition of doing this every day and kind of showing her what's okay and what's not okay. Now she just sits there at the fence and watches me just like I want her to. Pretty smart, aren't you? Good job. Get in. Come on. Good girl. Callie's already in. She knows the deal. See if our new roof stays on or not. The other day I noticed that one of these weaned calves had gotten into the middle pasture here where they are not supposed to be. So that can only mean one thing. They broke through this fence somewhere and it didn't take me long to find where because it seems like somebody breaks out in this same spot almost every single year. And the spot that I'm talking about is down here in the corner. You, if you look at this wire, there are numerous splices and fixes. Uh, this post is, is bent over now, but it's actually been cracked I think for a while that's why there's a t-post right next to it and this area is has just always been problematic I don't know why something draws them to this corner and they either are getting scared and running through this fence or they're wanting out and this is where they decide to jump it in fact one day if I've got some extra steel left over from one of the corral projects what I will probably do is put like two or three steel posts in and then just do a top rail, maybe a mid rail also, and then string the wire up along that. That should at least stop them from running straight through the fence and trying to jump over it. But that is one of those one day when I have time projects. Today, we just gotta fix this wire and cross our fingers. Well, we've got quite the audience today, that's for sure. Anybody wanna fess up who did this? Actually, you can see this broke right here at a splice, which is not uncommon. Uh, wherever you kink that wire and bend it around, that creates a weak spot, and that's what happens. But there isn't really a better option as far as how to fix this, so we'll just do the same thing again, and hello. <laughs> we'll do the same thing again and hope for a better result. I need a splice wire. So some of you guys might remember I was very close to turning the cows out into this middle pasture to give them a little bit more. And when I saw that calf had broke into this field, I was sure glad that I didn't do that yet. This little piece of wire that we cut, we're gonna twist it onto the existing wire where it broke. And 2302 is just so willing to help. You can't be mad at him, you know?
next step is I'm going to hook this wire into the wire stretcher. The important part here is that you leave yourself enough of a tail on this end to wrap it up and make a splice. So we'll be taking our new wire that we cut and you want to make sure that you got overlap. So that's like probably eight inches there. And by the time we stretch this out, we should have plenty of room to, uh, to wrap these together. And then you guys can break it again. And I can fix it again. And on and on it will go. I think that tool is called a Ranch X wire stretcher. I, they come in several different names under different manufacturers. It is a tool that I really like and I actually use it quite often. The one thing that I guess I don't like about it is that after you fix your broken wire, it is nice and tight and it really highlights how loose and stretched out the rest of these wires are. Like the second one didn't break, but it's pretty stretched out and a calf can easily get his head through there. So. I think I would probably be smart to just tighten this one up as well. well I won't call it good as new, but it's better than it was. And a little side note here, this black steer that's right here front and center, this is actually 2303, which was our heaviest steer at weaning, and he also had not the best daily gain but he was like in that top tier i think there were only two steers that had a better daily gain than this guy did and it wasn't by much and as i look at him stacked in here with all these other calves you can really tell where he's carrying that extra weight he's about one and a half times wider than the average calf standing here i'd say do we have a tired puppy it's the best kind all right, this fence ought to be good till they break it again. A few people have made comments wondering why am I not feeding the cows in the feeder here? And you know, why am I rolling the hay out on the ground instead of using this feeder? Well, I've, I think I've explained this before, but if someone is asking, then I assume many people are wondering. So the reason why I'm not using the feeder yet is just because there are not enough slots on this feeder in the configuration that it's in now to accommodate every cow that's out here. As you can see, with the bale rolled out on the ground, everybody has equal access to getting at the hay. With a bale in the feeder here, I think this can only feed like 18 or 19 at a time. And right now we've got what, like 36, 37 cows out here. So it just wouldn't work. The reason that I built it like that is because the, the goal or the plan I should say, usually is to bale graze the cattle until about December, at which point half of the cows will go over to the winter pasture and whatever's remaining will stay here. At that point, I have few enough cows in the corral that I can use this feeder as it was designed and the other cows obviously are at the winter pasture. But until they go over there, this is how we gotta feed them. And that brings me to another question that I've been seeing pop up quite often is, and that is, are we still going to the winter pasture this year? And yes, we are We are gonna be taking cattle over there. I usually don't take them over until at least December, sometimes later, just depending on how things work out. We've gotten enough rain this fall that I think sometime early, mid-December we'll be fine for taking cattle over there. So they will be going, but we're just, we're still, we're not quite there yet. Huh, the mess is still there. That's weird. All right, watch out boys. Over. Now the trick is to give them some hay before you start filling that water trough up because if you don't, they'll sit there and mess around with that hose and I'll just have to babysit it the whole time. Never do such a thing. Now I know that you guys have hay. 
But one thing that I wish I wouldn't have put the water trough over here for this one reason, and that is I can't check to see if it's full from outside the fence. I gotta walk out here and do it. And it is full and clean, so we're good. Mm -hmm. After gathering weights on all these calves at weaning, I was provided with a wealth of information about how much they weigh currently, who has been the, the best gainers over this period of time. But one modification that I need to make to my system is that I need some way for their ID numbers to tell me whether they are a steer or a heifer. As I look through all the numbers on my Gallagher app, I can definitely see who the top performers are, but I don't always know who's a heifer and who's a steer. Generally, the big, you know, the heaviest calves are steers. But when it comes time to picking replacement heifers, I'm gonna have to, I guess, walk around this group of calves with my phone and figure out who's who. And I mean, we'll get it done. This is a very minor complaint as I'm saying it out loud. But I think in the future, I've got to come up with some way like even numbers are heifers and odd numbers are steers or just put an H on the tag or, you know, something, something along those lines. Um, so yeah, it's, it's an ever evolving process. Looks good to me. What do you think? Am I gonna work? I think that's gonna do it for this one. Thanks for hanging out with me today, guys, and I hope I'll see you again on Farmer Tyler Ranch.